Okay, wait, it's that, it's that black button there on the left. Yeah. Okay, I got it. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, go. Good. All right. Let me see. Oh, just, just on the edges. Only touch the edges. Let me see. Good. Can we send these to Grandpa Michael right away? Yeah, put them in the box. How can we have to wait? This is going to be a good one. How can we write letters to everyone if you're never going to send how them? How come? How come? Do you remember when I told you that this was going to be a very, very special adventure just for you and me and Kirkland? How come Bridget didn't come? I miss her. I miss her, too. I miss her more. I miss her more. Hey, she took care of me when I was a little kid, too, you know, just like she takes care of me. <laughs> She's like a mother to me in a lot of ways, and I love her very much. And I write to Bridget because it makes me feel closer to her and to Grandma and Grandpa. I'm going to write a letter to Bridget. I think that is a wonderful idea. I love you. Oh, that must be lunch. Go check on your brother while you're at it, will you? And wash your hands. How come Carl wash his hands? How come? How come? How come? Jake! Hey, 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 little Ann, you taking good care of your mom? So have they set bail yet? The hearing's scheduled. They took your watch? That's the least of it within the hour. Cass doesn't predict any problems. I might even be out here by this afternoon. So we'll have the whole night together. Yeah. Oh, man. Not me. I guess they thought I'd beat my way out of here. Gotta go. Call me as soon as you know anything, okay? First call in me. You never think of anyone but yourself, Cecile. But you know something? I have rights now. And I'm gonna see to it that you finally start paying attention to Maggie. She comes first. Uh, my sentiments exactly. Which is why I don't want her told. Cass, she is too vulnerable right now. Look at everything she's been through. All right. <sighs> we won't tell her for the time being. Good. That's all but I'm asking. Long term, I'm making no promises. Someday, Maggie is going to have to be told that I'm her father. Thank you, yes. Oh, I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing it for her. I don't want to disrupt her life anymore. Rachel has given her the only stability she's ever known. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> Are you, I'm agreeing with you. No, here. you're what? not. You just want to make sure that I keep my mouth shut so that Maggie remains a Cory uh. and inherits her trust fund. Look, I'm going to keep this very simple for you. If I decide that Maggie's interests are best served by her knowing the truth, I'm going to tell her. And from now on, I'll do what I decide is best for Maggie. You got that? I'd rather talk to my father. father. In fact, I decide I want to live with my father. You think dear old dad would like that? Why, why are you doing this, Maggie? What, what, wait a minute, Sandy, <laughs> you know him. He's probably in some remote corner of the world. Anyway, you can't reach him, Maggie. What, have you thought about this? What about Carl and Rachel and their generosity? And oh, their... I forgot. If I move out of here and live with my father, you're going to have to find some place else to live, <laughs> won't you, Mother? Blaine, it's me, Maggie. Can I talk to my father? All right. Don't do this. You don't want to do this. Why? Are you, you're just trying to hurt me, sweetheart. After what? We're getting so close now, Maggie. I have a right to talk to my father, Blaine. I don't care if he's on an overseas call. Tell him it's his daughter. A more convenient time? You know what? Don't just forget it. Honey, honey, look. He, he, it's not that he... Thank you very much. This is 
great. All right. I think we should start. Okay, okay fine. Um, I know it's cold out here, yes. folks, but the purpose of this press conference is to announce the publication of a book that is so hot it will melt the heart of the coldest critics. <laughs> On behalf of Corey Publishing, I am proud to announce the publication of a remarkable new book by one of our favorite authors, the legendary romance writer Felicia Gallant. Uh. Thank you very much. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to be launching this new book right here in my own hometown. Oh. You know, I, I'm sure that some of you remember when I said that I wouldn't write another romance book. <laughs> my fans certainly didn't believe me, and you know what? They were right. <laughs> so it's wonderful to be back again, and I thank all of you for coming. Oh. Really. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yes. When will it hit the bookstores? Well, I, I have it on a certain authority that Wallingford's has some advanced copies. You see, the author and the owner are very close. <laughs> anyway, I think the rest of the world will see them in about a month, Marshall? Uh, yes, yeah, uh, about a month. What's the matter, Matt? No libel to Prince uh, uh, The Herald. Yes. Felicia, a lot of your new book takes place in a hospital. Are the similarities to Bay City General just a coincidence? <laughs> Don't tell me John Hudson's wife wants to be my secretary. I knew this was a bad idea. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. I, I am looking for someone, but what are your qualifications? Aside from having the good sense to throw John Hudson out of your life. My relationship with my husband has nothing to do with my qualifications as a secretary. And frankly, it's none of your business. Oh, on the contrary, Mrs. Hudson, it's everybody's business. It's kind of the downside to working in a hospital. You know, it's a very small world, and unfortunately, People gossip. Can you handle it? I've been handling it ever since John and I went our separate ways. I guess you have. Well, let me warn you, the atmosphere at Bay City General is chaotic at best. Everything's a crisis, and if you can't solve it, they'll run right over you to get to someone who can. How's your boiling point? Hi. Mm. Are you sure you want to work here? Dr. Madison, Fairfax Newman. Oh. My plane arrived a little early. Dr. Newman, of course. Facts. I beg your pardon? Call me Fax, everyone does. You mean like the machine? Or is there another one like you at home? They tell me I'm one of a kind. <laughs> well, we're very grateful that you were willing to fill in on such short notice. This position for a skilled resident came on us rather suddenly. I, I hope you're planning to practice medicine here and not just your tennis, sir. I haven't had a chance to stow my gear. Uh, well, I'm sure you'll find an empty locker in the on-call room. Uh, why don't you get settled, Dr. Newman, and we can do our orientation at the originally scheduled time. That would be great. Good. Welcome aboard. Thank you. That's what it's like around here, constant interruptions. Yeah. Well, if you like, we could do this another time. N no. I I've got a better idea. Why don't you come with me? I think we need to get to know each other better. Hi. Dr. Uh, oh, Evans, um, Fairfax Newman. I'm new on staff. Oh, nice to meet you. Uh, Fair? Fax. Like the... Machine. Oh, I'm sorry. You must get that all day. <laughs> oh, uh, only for the last uh, five years or so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, seriously, I've got a question. Mm -hmm. How's the food? Mm, it's delicious if you like bagels. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, upstairs, downstairs? Uh, third floor, uh, North Wing. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, excuse me. Uh, that, that locker's taken. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, it, it belongs to a, a doctor, a resident, actually. He's, he's not here right now, but, but he'll be back. Oh, the doctor who got suspended. I'm uh, replacing him. Oh. Well, um, how about this one? Will that do? Uh, third floor, north wing, uh, bagels. Yeah. Thanks.
can't leave you alone for a second, can uh, I? Andrew, what, what are you doing here? This is, this is only for staff. Is Flyboy here on staff? Who? Then you're a woman, man, woman, aren't you, Dr. Evans? I, um, I don't want to do this right now, Andrew. See, and I thought you'd be lonely. What with your boyfriend in jail and all? Morgan did not kill those patients. Well, the paper says he's a bit of a Well, the paper's the wrong. Well, they found a book in his locker in defense of assisted suicide. Oh, and I wonder who put it there. Come on, face it, Courtney. The guy's a real sicko. Don't go yet. <laughs> Hands off of her. It's okay, Morgan. Doctor, death to the rescue. How romantic. You keep it up, buddy. Because I'm about this far away from justifiable homicide. See what I'm talking about? It's a dangerous man, Courtney. Watch yourself. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. What do you want? Nothing. Why am I glad to see you? The hearing went okay? Yep, I'm free for the moment. Oh. Uh, you were right, Dr. Evans. The uh, bagels are great. <laughs> Uh, Morgan, um, I'm sorry, this is, uh... Facts. Like the machine. Uh, Morgan Winthrop. Great, you're just the guy I need to see. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Dr. Madison said you could catch me up on, uh... Chris Madison, Thomas Beck, Jr., and April Ingram. Those are your patients. Well, I've been told I'm replacing you. I'm not going anywhere. Come on, you can go write Bridget that letter, and, and you can uh, help Kirkland color that picture for Bridget, okay? Please? He's not allowed to use my pen. You're not allowed <laughs> to use his crayons. Okay, Kirk can use my pen. Okay, he can use your crayons. Bye. You look very good. Just what... Tell me what it is, okay? Because whatever it is, just you wouldn't attract me all the way. Did Gabe tell you where I was? <laughs> no, I, I it took me a little while, but I did it all by myself. Okay. It's bad. I know it's, it's bad. bad. It's Bridget. Bridget, I knew. I had this dream about Bridget. She had a stroke, Vicky. Okay. Okay. She had a stroke. You know, they can do so much now with therapy. It's incredible. They can retrain all the muscles. I mean, it's Spencer had a stroke, so I've read so much about it. Now. But wait, let me get my wallet because I want to write you a check in case. It's a very bad stroke, Vicky. I mean, it's almost a blessing in disguise because I don't think she would have wanted to live like that. I mean, I spent... I spent the night with her at the hospital. She never regained consciousness. I mean, there's nothing you could do. She was on life support. It was very quick. it was i mean she just loved worrying about you and the kids and running after him. i mean it's what it's what kept her young
What's the matter? You have, you have something against girls? Bridget always said I was going to have a little girl. Oh, and what she said usually came true. Uh, do you have any of that 40-year-old scotch? I mean, isn't that, what, isn't that what Bridget would take a drink of when she wanted to uh, celebrate something? Yes. How fast can you pack? Uh, pack? Bridget's funeral is the day after tomorrow. No. No, I... And you don't know that. Grant confessed. I mean, I know that doesn't make up for everything that he did, but uh, it will make it easier for you to come back home. No. Um, I'm glad Grant confessed. And I hope he goes to jail. But... No, I, I can't come home. know that I'm a real stickler for research, right? <laughs> yes. Well, I wanted to do something with a contemporary setting, and my daughter, whether she knows it or not, is really the one responsible for that. Oh. <laughs> Lorna? Thank you. Lorna is the director of the public relations department of Bay City General. Yes, she is. She really gave me so much information, everything I really needed to write about the inner workings of a big city hospital. I, I think that my mother, Felicia, has done an admirable job of capturing the pulse and energy of a major metropolitan hospital. Oh, yeah. And any similarities between her fictitious Monroe Medical Center and Bay City General are purely coincidental. <laughs> Well, doesn't the uh, hospital in the book open a new wing? Yes, it does. In fact, it's a very important plot point. But my book doesn't have a bomb scare. <laughs> <laughs> in doing your research, did yes. you spend a lot of time at Bay City Jail? Yes, of course I did, mostly with my daughter, uh, who, as I just said, was an enormous resource for me. Did you consult with any of the doctors there? Well, I, I have many longtime friends on staff. Um, in fact, one, uh, a dear friend, Judy, my, my friend and my sponsor. Uh, Judy runs the hospital cafeteria. <laughs> and believe me, that's a hotbed of sexual intrigue. <laughs> and Judy and I spent many hours sitting over Danish and coffee uh, discussing this hospital. Oh, and I should probably tell you that her tuna casserole is superb. She'd kill me if I didn't give her that plug. <laughs> Felicia, where did you get the idea for the book? Was there any one specific inspiration? All of you know that my last book was an autobiography. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It was a very rewarding experience for me. Uh, let's try Carlino's. I, it's not clouded in any life. luck. We I, be, but it don't was difficult and very painful for me. And um, when it was over, I needed to do something, well, fun. <laughs> <laughs> and as you all know, romance fiction is fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'll take uh, care of this. It's a place to escape, at least for me, and I hope, certainly, for all of my readers. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Well, uh, it's really a challenge me what for you me. Think you're I spent doing? most of my a time A press conference, about which was approved by your PR director. And exotic places. And this she time seems I wanted to, to think that you could have used the good people. Well, it's over people now. People go to work, raise families. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, this what? press conference is now adjourned. Oh. Now, if we would please clear the area as quickly as possible. So we need to keep the entrance I, clear. I will be. I appreciate your cooperation. Thank you. Come and see me, and, and we'll sign books and oh, talk. I love you. Thank you all. Mr. Lonsdale, what is supposed to be John Hudson? This is, a, this is a book, a characters in a book. That's all this uh, is. The chief of staff of a major metropolitan hospital. Well, isn't John Hudson chief of staff of Bay City General? Uh, Dr. Hudson is on temporary leave of absence. These characters are, are not real people. They, there's a, a disclaimer at the front of the book. Uh -huh. mistake. And uh, this fictitious doctor, does he also cheat on his wife? This book is about romance fiction. The emphasis being on fiction. Ms. Gallant, you ought to be ashamed of yourself feeding off of someone else's pain. If there's any resemblance of someone living or dead, it is purely coincidental. Well, let me just tell you one thing. The next time you want to make a poster of you and your lover, put it someplace else. Miss Gallant. I, 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 I am so, so sorry. I, I hope I see you at Wallingford. Thank you all for coming. Are you crazy going over to the hospital like that? Shh. You listen to me. I want you to stay away from there until these charges have been resolved. Hey, Rita Madison already replaced me. She didn't wait for an arraignment, let alone a trial. I guess she had to make sure she had the schedule covered. Oh, so damn calculated. And then this guy has got a name like a phone machine. What? Fax. His middle Fax. name is probably email. He's got my files. He's He's got my patience. He probably has got my locker. Nope. No one's getting into that locker. Oh. Not without a crowbar. You too much. <laughs> we like her. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, what happens next? Felicia has got a lot of brass, I'll give her that. Hawking her book right in front of the hospital. That she wrote the book at all is unconscionable. Dr. Madison, I do appreciate you sticking up for me. Well, I didn't do it for you, really. I... Why don't we order? The minestrone's good. If you weren't doing it for me... Let's just say that I've been there. Does it get any better? Can't get any worse. No. <laughs> Actually, for me, it it did get better. I met a terrific guy, and I got my second chance. I didn't realize you were married. Widowed. Oh, that's okay. Lionel let me believe in fidelity and love again. Oh, what a concept. <laughs> it just galls me seeing her out there parading her success. Look, don't worry. She'll get hers. They always do. No. Morgan, no. Morgan. Morgan. Hey, Doc. Morgan. I just wanted to thank you for your support. Uh, Dr. Winthrop, this is a private lunch. How is it that you can suspend me when I haven't even been convicted Look, yet? I'm sorry, Dr. Winthrop, but we really can't discuss this without hospital counsel present. It's really the same old story, isn't it? You did the same thing to John Hudson to Tomas Rivera because Rita Madison cares more about her reputation than she does about the patients okay. or her staff. That's enough. Isn't that That's right, enough. doctor? Dr. Madison, my brother is obviously very upset. As his attorney, I would like to formally request that you reconsider his suspension. Good idea, Mr. Winthrop. Your client is no longer suspended. He's fired. Well, you really need me. Erica. When I'm with you you finish your sandwich. But the ice cream will melt. Well, then you're going to have to eat it fast. Oh, it's got to be tough handling the two of them. Yeah, uh, uh, sometimes, I guess, but... 
Definitely doesn't give me a lot of time to think. Which is good. Right now, I need need that. I uh, I like my life here. I really do. It's like a brand new life, you know. And uh, I needed that. <laughs> it's just getting to be too much at home, you know. Just memories. Like I'd go to the park and then I'd think about Ryan playing ball with Steven or pushing Kirkland in the swing or go past the Harbor Club. And I think about this one time where I rented out the whole Harbor Club and I really surprised Ryan. Those are good memories. But then I'd go past the police station hospital or the cemetery and it was just too much I uh, I need a I just can't go back yeah well I, I definitely I definitely think that you uh, need a break <laughs> it's actually more than a break to wake up and just think about my kids you know and and not not think about ryan at least until i get strong enough that i don't just completely feel wiped out every time i i remember something right. you know you know uh, no matter how much you run away it, it's always gonna be there I know Ryan's gone. I know he's not coming back. It's just I never loved anybody the way I love him, you know? He's a part of me. And it'll take some time. How much time? <laughs> um, I don't know offhand. <laughs> but... I will be back. Do you ever get lonely? Done. Done? Who wants chocolate? Me. Me, I do, I do. All right, put the spoons and the bowls over there. You know something? I have as many men in my life as I can handle right now. this in the next edition. You coming? Uh, no. You know, I think I'll meet you back at the paper. All right. All right. Raphael. But you left town, man. No, Nick. I still got some stuff to do. Another odd job for Cecile? I'll tell you what. Whatever it is, finish it, get lost. Oh, what? You're gonna run me out of town on the rail? I'm shaking in my boots, Dan. I'm serious, Raphael. What happened to you, man? You used to be really cool, Nick. You know that? Funny how people change. You can't fire me. I can, and I have. Dr. Madison, will you be reasonable? You can't fire Dr. Winthrop without cause. No, Bay City General is a private institution, and I've been authorized by the board to run it as I see fit. Morgan, wait. Wait, wait. Will you excuse me? You'll be hearing from me. Well, how do you like the job so far? How could I be this stupid? How could it not occur to me that, that they would think that this could happen in real life? Well, that is part of it, isn't it? I, I guess. I mean, I, I, I guess. I, of course I did identify with this character a little more than others, but this is how I write a book for... 
I mean, you have to imagine yourself in the part. That's how you do it. Except this time no one's wearing a corset or riding a horse. You think that's it? Well, I, what, I, I do. Setting? I think that's part of it. And yeah. what is the other part? What? That I'm living out my fantasy life here, that I'm using other people's oh, lives don't and their Don't listen pain? to Rita Madison, I'm telling you. She's got mm. some kind of problem. I don't know what it is. Congratulations. I have what? just ordered the second printing. Are you out of your mind? After what happened out there, those people think that this book is about me. She didn't realize. What? Well, you honestly didn't realize that people would assume that this book was based on fact? It is not based on fact. I can prove this. I gave you the treatment of this book before John and I, before anything happened. Oh, yeah. What? It's no use. Is that what we're saying here? As far as the public goes, the more you dispute it, the more they believe it. So you shouldn't even worry about it. You know what we're going to do? I'm, we're going to withdraw it, Marshall. That's all. I mean, I'm going to issue some kind of a statement here, and, and the bookstores are not going to get this no, no, book. No, 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 no. Wait Marshall, I, I am not I getting am here. I am not going to withdraw Cory Publications' biggest hit since, well, since your last book. The, the heart that heals is going straight to the top of the charts, Felicia. It's a guaranteed bestseller. You've heard the rumor, haven't you? That I have no heart. That I'm just a robot in a power suit. Well, I've heard about the suit. <laughs> you are no robot. If you've been through what I've been through these past few months, then... Look, uh... the battle scars do heal. <laughs> when John comes back from Africa, I, I really don't know how it's going to be. Uh, look, if taking this job is going to be a problem... No, it's... No. Right now, the only thing that I have to worry about is supporting myself. Good. You know, you'll have to meet with human resources, but that's only a formality. Your agency has confirmed your skills. So if you're still interested, I'd really appreciate it if you could start as soon as possible. I mean, I, that I have the job? If you want it, it's yours. How you doing? Hi. Good. Good. What will it be there, beautiful? Beer. Uh-huh. Light beer. You got any ID? Of course. <laughs> okay. Debbie. It's Debbie, right? Yes. Okay, Debbie. How come it says on here that you have brown eyes? Colored contacts. Aha. Uh -huh. Colored contacts. <laughs> okay, tell me this. Uh, how tall are you? Five, six. Not today. Sorry. Good evening. Uh, yes? Good book? Yeah, if you're into angioplasty. How could you read that in oh, here? Beats reading at home. I know what you mean. Buy me a drink? Sure. So he says how come, oh, so oh, I say... Hold that thought for a second, right? Hold on. Bourbon and ginger for the lady. And hold the bourbon. Knock yourself out. Doug? Vax, don't worry about it. Thank you, Doug. Excuse me. What do you think you're doing? appreciate you coming down here. I just wanted to tell you... myself. Would you do me a favor? Um... at Bridget's service. Would you just say how much I love her? And uh, get a big spread of those white roses. You know, she really would have liked that. And, and some heather fr from the boys. Sure, you don't want to be there. Too many funerals. It's okay. Thanks for understanding. Whatever you need. I'm, don't worry about me. You kidding me? I, I promised Bridget that I would take care of you and the boys, and I'm going to do that whether you like it or not. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss me, 
too. <laughs> I miss you, honey. Hey. Hmm. How did you find me? Stephen? Jake? You want to come here? Jake's got... Stephen, now. Listen, I know you for my whole life. Give me a little credit, okay? Stephen! Get the out of here! I got you! You better take good care of your mom. You got that? Okay. I didn't hear you. Okay. All right. Y'all yeah. be cool. And we're number 15. Who wants to go swimming? Me, me, me. Go help your brother into his suit. Okay. I'll be right in. Hi, um, I was wondering if you could send up some candles. <laughs> yeah, just those little, the little kind, um, like you'd use at a memorial. Thanks. Kirk's suit is wet. Kirk's suit is wet? Well, why don't you try the red suit? He doesn't like the red suit. Oh, well, why don't you just tell him you don't always get what you want? Oh, sweetheart, that's room service. Hey. I can't do it, Vicky. I can't leave without you. Thank God John wasn't here. What would I have done if he had come to this press conference? Felicia, this press conference was the best thing that could have happened to oh, us. Look, if Rita wasn't my ex-wife, I would have kissed her. She actually put the L word into play. The L word? Lover, Lorna. And these... these characters are not John and me. They just aren't. Of course they're not. But I, for one, would not be upset if the book-buying public thought they were. Marshall, this is my life we're talking about here. You know, this is not your quarterly report. Mother, listen to me. The last time I checked, you were a romance writer with a new novel, which is going to sell a lot of copies and make you a lot of money because people are going to read it, it's fun to read, and they're going to tell their friends. Right. So Charlene's nose got a little out of joint. So what? It's not like any of this was news to her. And as far as John is concerned, well, let's just say he should be honored that you would ever compare him to any of the heroes in your book. She's right. That's right, so cut it out. You're just experiencing nerves, which you always do right before you publish a book. I, I, I know that, that John does like my books. I mean, he, he's told me that. Oh, any man who doesn't like your books doesn't deserve you. Amen. So, what? Hmm. You both think that... You both think this is going to be okay, then? Okay? What? The woman earns her advance before lunch, and she wants to know if it's going to be okay. It's only going to be okay if you make it okay. You're Felicia Gallant. Act like it. Mm -hmm. That's better. Now, what are you going to do if Rita Madison starts bugging you again? Fight back. Mm, that's my million-dollar baby. Babysitter! Hey, come on! Well, he definitely didn't go back to the hospital. He'll be here, don't worry. Maggie, let me take you home. For your information, there was nothing but soda in that glass. I don't know what's going on with you. That's right, you but, don't. Maggie, you're in trouble, okay? I'm not going to sit here and watch you make it worse. So let's just get your stuff and let's go. What's wrong? What could be wrong? I'm rich, I'm beautiful, I have the perfect life. But this place just isn't happening. Go. It's all my fault, you know. Cass? What? I should never have agreed to talk to that board. I need to know exactly what you told them and how they responded so that I can prepare a case for an appeal. Hey, Courtney. Don't worry about Morgan. I know him. He just 
went someplace to cool off. the world fans if you can't wait till next week to find out what's happening on your favorite soap then call nbc soap phone right now dial 1-900-680-4nbc each call costs one dollar per minute